Hey, what's up? I'm Espen Croft, and this is the Roland W30 Music Workstation from 1989. Today, I'm checking it out. Since the W30 is in essence a uh, sampler from Roland and uh, back in that days you had to um, install the operating system upon startup of the machine. So I'm going to insert the system disk here and in real time see how long it takes to load. The exception to the rule is the great Roland S10 sampler which has the operating system already in ROM. So after you've loaded the system disk, uh, you can start playing with performances or sounds or samples because the W30 actually has a lot of samples already in a ROM chip. So you don't have to sample anything or load anything, you can actually start playing uh, straight away and that's a very cool feature of the W30. Loading sounds from a floppy takes some time and uh, as you can see on the screen here, I've fast forward the process, it actually takes around a minute to load a full floppy. As the W30 is fully compatible with the S50, 550 and 330, you have access to a large library of sounds should you want to use those. At the back we have eight separate outputs and a sample input. And this particular W30 has a SCUS support as well. I've split up the video into three parts today. One part is going to be me playing the W30 and I'm playing some favorite sounds and samples. One part is me going through the actual sampling process on this great sampler. And the third part is me going through the track I released last Friday, the Watching the World song, and I'm going to show you how I used the W30 to make the sounds, make the arrangement, and how I mixed and processed a lot of the sounds in that song. So check out the description for uh, chapter markers. And unlike the S50 before it, the W30 has real-time filters and resonance control. And I'm a pad and string addict, so I judge a sampler, especially a 12-bit sampler, upon its pads and string sound capabilities. And that's where the filter and resonance come into play. So let me uh, show you what this sampler can sound like. And you can of course also see your envelope setting graphically in the display. So I'm changing the um, attack of the sound and you can see how I can see the envelope.
a little more Juno-like pad string, perhaps? Here are some of the sounds from watching the world.
Now let me just freeze frame this for a moment and explain why Roland sounds so beautiful with their old fleet of samplers, the S-series, 12-bit S-series. You see, back then most other sampler manufacturers, they did uh, change the pitch by changing the frequency of the playback when you played back the sampling sound. Roland didn't do that. They used a method which alters the spaces between the data, uh, and that's called a, a fixed sampling method. And um, they do this by uh, incorporating a technique known as differential interpolation, and they're just filling in the gaps between sample points. And regardless of the tech behind it, I think that method sounds the best of all the samplers of the 80s and early 90s, but mostly the 80s. So let's carry on with the sampling process. Let me just delete everything I have in memory so we can start fresh. And in the W30 we have two wave banks, each can hold 7.2 seconds of a 30 kilohertz sample. So we have to set a sampling time and let's go for two seconds. And the original key will be C5. And I set a threshold level, and uh, once the sound input sound uh, reaches that threshold, it'll start sampling. And I'll do this in an automatic fashion called auto sampling. So I'm using the Korg MS10 to sample um, a synth sound into the W30 to play that polyphonically. And I'm going through the input, and I set the gain accordingly. So that's the MS10, or the original sound. And let's sample that at the threshold set of 18. And I press auto, and it's waiting for that sound. And it's working on processing that sound now, and here you have it. And now I can play it. But we might need to loop that sound to be able to play it indefinitely. So let's set a loop point. And we have different loop modes. One shot, we can go forward, backwards, and we can alternate between uh, the start and end of the, um, of the sample. But in this case, I want to go forward. And I'm also going to use the auto loop function. And I want to loop back from the end point. And this type of sound I have here is a very easy sound to get a good loop point in, regardless of method, really. So that worked beautifully, auto looping for that type of sound. All the effects are of course coming from the DP4. So let's try the filter on this sound then. Thank you. 
a little interning clipping there because uh, of the resonance. What else? Uh, well, we have the, um, the amplifier. So let's change the envelope setting of the attack, which you saw earlier uh, in this video. So let's do one more uh, where I sample my voice. Let's go for four seconds this time. Uh, same uh, frequency as before, setting the threshold level. And I'm just going to speak or sing into the microphone. Ah. Well, I sound half drunk and I even clipped the signal on its way in, but let's see what we can get out of it. The W30 is uh, thinking much longer now, so it's probably wondering uh, what creature violated its input. But here's the sound. <laughs> so let's trim this and do some fun stuff with the sound then. I had some space left and a lot of space in the end of the sample, so let's trim that out in the truncate menu. <laughs> Chopping off dead air was always a necessity when working with these old samplers with limited memory. So you had to do that to um, be able to save uh, stuff on disk, etc. <laughs> So let's go through the DAW, aka the DAW, and see how I put this all together. And here is my session, the project. I have the drums in red, bass in blue, synths in orange, piano in green, vocals are yellow, and I have a lo-fi track at the end there, I'll get back to that. So let's see what's going on. Sing my harmonies, there's no automated generated harmonies in my songs, never. 
So let's check out the drums in more detail. There's quite a lot of drums, all coming from the W30, of course. And uh, the most important parts are the snares. And the kick, both with a room gated reverb on them. Don't be afraid to use a lot of reverb doing 80s pop music. The bass... Bone dry, as it should be, usually. But I just send it out for parallel compression, as I do with uh, most of the um, other instruments as well especially the kick and snare. So let's check out the synths. You recognize many of these sounds from the parts before in the video when I went through most of these sounds. A little delay there, I've just offset the track of the second guitar synth. The choruses are pretty straightforward in terms of harmonies, but the verses have some uh, things going on. And this part of the chorus as well have some uh, notes that really doesn't go with, uh, with the chords, but that's intentional and deliberate to create tension and angst. I wanted to offset the verses against the choruses in this song with tension. I even throw in the odd note here in the solo. That's a factory piano. I'm passing by. So let's go through the vocal chain and what I use on my vocals. I've documented this before. I'm passing by, watching the world explode. Check out my how to do 80s vocals to get uh, more detail on this, but I use a little bit of auto-tune here because I'm using my baritone voice and my intonation isn't as good on that as my higher nasal voice. Some compression at first. I use my um, SSL channel strip on all my songs, all my vocals. 
I always use some even tight slap back echo on um, my voice as well, pitch shifted 9% up and down. Uh, that's a 80s trick. And some de-essing, of course. That is my insert chain, usually. 99% of all my songs have this chain. And I also send some out to, uh, to be reverbed and delayed. And I also have some harmonizing. And everything at the bottom there is sent out for some more parallel compression. I'm passing by, watching the world explode. Watching the world around you We're flying high Watching the world What time is love? And finally we have that track uh, way down called Lo-Fi And that is everything except the vocals mixed out through a Lo-Fi and degrading uh, plugin in this case. And the key is to uh, filter out all the highs and all the lows. And I even use uh, another filter uh, on this track to filter out even more high end. And the trick here is to put this way below. I'm just gonna pull it up now so you can hear it better. And put this track way below everything else to add back some energy into the overall sound. So let me um, A B this for you. It's very subtle, it's supposed to be subtle, but taking it off really doesn't help the track. With it on, it sort of gives a little energy boost into the whole sound. I never do anything without this kind of trick. You have to experiment with putting it ahead or behind the other beat with a few milliseconds. Sometimes that's the key, sometimes it has to be straight dead on. No track is the same. Well, that's it folks. I hope you enjoyed me going through uh, the W30 and some of its features and most of all, its sound. I'm Espencroft, I am the 80s, and until next time, cheers! <laughs>